So today I was in the mood to discover once more Kampala. So we ran to this uh, person that spoke to us about a place that was interesting, uh, named KK Beach. We took our stuff and we went all the way to KK Beach, which is somewhere around Gaba Market. Very interesting place, very busy place on the weekends, on a Sunday. See guys with the six packs and one packs. But it doesn't matter when you have pocket pack. You can have six pack or one pack as long as the pocket pack is packed. You're good. So ladies like one pack with a pack or six pack with no pack in a pocket. I'm sure they always want one pack with a pack, you know what I mean? So KK Beach is just next to Victoria Lake. Very interesting place. It's not like a sand beach, but it's a beach. People are happy and couples trying to mingle and get together. Uh, lots of music, very loud people, very interesting. What I've noticed is Ugandans love parties. They party every single day. As usual, you know, usually when I go to a place, what I usually do is I go walk around, like an inspection. You know, like a alpha dog would do, or alpha lion to just walk around, you know, like a signature. Then, you know, as a good customer trying to support I like to support African business people. I ordered some food, chicken and fries. I actually wanted them grilled, but they said they could only fry it in oil. I don't like it, but I had to buy it because you just want to bring something to the table to this person that's trying very hard to have a business. What was interesting was the hiring of costume. So you could actually hire a costume to swim in it. Let's say you forget your costume home, you just come to this place and you say, okay, uh, can I hire your costume? And you wear it and you just jump into the water and swim. I found it very interesting. But I don't know if I'll be able to do it though. Like thinking of all the people that I've put it on before. People who have worn it before. I understand we do a lot of things like that. We eat from the same spoons. You don't have specific spoons you eat in. I know some of you are crazy enough to do that. But you know, in this case, it's different. I guess the spoon is different because it's family. In this case, it's like a random person just wore this costume and now I must put it on again and wear it and jump it. I don't know. I just, I just find it kind of, kind of, kind of weird. And then we went out because uh, unfortunately there wasn't so much to see. We were hoping to do a boat ride, but the boat was not available. So we walked out. I was very touched with the cows that I saw. You know, this is a person's house, just his house, and behind his house is cows. Like, brr, wow, that's just beautiful. Isn't Africa beautiful, really? You'll never see that in the US or in Europe. You have to be a farmer or anything like that. You've got all the license. You can't even have chicks or chicken or whatever running in your field without a license. What do you need the license for to have a cow? License is rubbish. That's how they control you. Everything you need a license. Why do you need a license to own a cow or a goat? Who came up with that? The good thing about Africa as well is when you own a car, it's your car. When you own a house, it's your house. It's not about owning a house by credit. Meaning, give me the house, I'll pay you slowly. No, I've already paid for my house. They're trying to tell us that we are poor. How can we be poor if we own our cars, we own our house? While over there, they don't own the house and the cars. You think you own your house. You don't because you, it's not yours. You have to pay every month. Right? And if you don't pay, what happens? They come and repossess it. There's no repossession in Africa. Why do you need a license? A license to live. In Africa, holding kettles is part of the life that we have. It's part of our reality. Why do you need a piece of paper to have kettles? I know some of you are talking about disease. Why haven't there been diseases that have eradicated African people if we should all be scared about disease? I think these people just come around, they create all these fears in your head. You could die of a disease, you could die of an accident, if something falls on your head, and then they sell you insurances. And then you buy insurance. Life is <laughs> I'm not saying you shouldn't have those insurances. I'm just saying they sell you fear because most of the time these things don't happen. <laughs> Good vibe on the street, walking down the street of Gaba. We went straight into the market, natural African type of market. 
where people just sell on the street, they sell on the ground. Some people from the Western countries will tell you, oh, this is not hygienic, oh, you could die of a disease. But we've never seen, interestingly, never seen anybody die of a disease from food or an African market. Maybe our immune system is just different, I don't know. But if the immune system are different and strong, isn't that a good thing? So we went down the street and I saw this guy, he looked very Congolese to me. You know, the style, the glasses, the vibe, the glamour. You know, Congolese people like <laughs> shiny stuff. Like you see a red shirt and a green shirt, white shoes and blue hat. That's <laughs> Congolese people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nigeria. Many people think I'm Nigerian and when they see me, they greet me, you know, they greet me as a Nigerian person. As we were walking down the street, a young boy, I mean like this, he looks like a toddler. He, he, he was just about like, I don't know, nine, eight years old or ten or something max. And he was looking at me and talking in Luganda and I was like, okay, what is this boy talking about? Cool, it's nice. It's nice to see that. You don't see that in Europe. Or US and then I bumped into this guy who just came running to me uh, he's a guy that I met previously as I was just exploring the area and we went on a boat ride together he's a like a, what do you call it like he's got a boat and he takes you for boat ride and he was very very happy to see me and he came running to me it was a good feeling you know it, it just feels good when you come to a place and people meet you for the very first time and after the very first time they just feel like you know like yeah hey, brother like you know it felt great maybe it means i'm a good person i don't know i am a good person must be <laughs> and he was trying very hard to get me into his boat again as much as he likes me he had to make money i understand which i understand completely him being probably a family man you have to look after the family you have to make some money but unfortunately that was not the reason why i came there long time oh my god 21 <laughs> and again this was very interesting to see on the left hand side was all these bunch of restaurants where they sell seafood or mainly fish and they were trying desperately to catch my attention like hey how are you doing first i thought it was a doctor i was like hey doctor are you a doctor He's like yeah i'm a stomach doctor <laughs> and then i was like okay cool africa is so diverse so many different things that you probably don't see in a different country things you will see in nigeria not necessarily you will see in congo or uganda or rwanda i just think it's a good thing to go traveling around and see what these countries have to offer it's just an amazing moment adrian our director had a chat with the guy say oh this guy is american he's american and if you want him to eat your food you need to take him to the kitchen and show him how it from how it works how the whole process functions i mean you you need to say it if you say you're nigerian or you ghanaian they probably won't take you that seriously but if you say you're american then they go like oh american get the american in let's show the american free of charge if you're nigerian or ghanaian or congolese they're going to ask you for money to see what's happening in the back the amount of work and struggle that goes in there just to get the fish on the table was just unexplainable then the guy that i met earlier the guy that I called the doctor was trying to explain to me how the process works. I'm not a big fan of tilapia, but yeah, I had to get the experience. I had to go through this. So I fried my own fish. It helps to be American in Africa, but just don't abuse it. <laughs> a little longer than a few minutes later. And again, what was interesting was the setup. So you come in front and you sit. It's like a bench with a table and people sitting right in front of you. 
And these people could be strangers that you don't even know. On a Western perspective, it would be very uncomfortable. Like sitting right in front of a stranger and start eating. Like, you know, like in prison. In Africa, everybody's brother. In Africa, at least most Africa, you have to wash your hand before you eat. Just don't know. You, we don't know what you've been scratching and what you've been... This food was amazing. Such a great experience. You know, like, I'm not a big fan of tilapia, but this was made in a certain way that I just sort of got lost into it. I don't know if it was maybe the avocado or the accompaniment of sweet potatoes, I don't know, but the whole mixture, the whole cocktail was just perfect at that time. It's always good to see new things. I think it's a blessing being able to travel around the world, especially Africa at this very moment, seeing different things, different cultures, experiencing their way of life. It's a, such a blessing that I am truly am grateful of. We're still here, we're gonna be in your country maybe very soon. So if you are local and you feel like you can contribute into this and you're interested, please let us know. I'll be very happy to have you with us. Maybe you can take us somewhere interesting and we can share with the world. God bless.